Hello everybody, I'm Rich Matthews, I'm the Powerhouse Pastor, and tonight I want to jump on for a few minutes and talk about offense and talk about anger, because I think we're living in a time and we're, we're um, operating under a system right now that is preying upon our propensity to get angry and offended and operate in rage, which it, 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 you know as well as I do if you've spent any time reading the Word of God that operating out of the rage of our old man is not, not godly and not um, coming from the kingdom of heaven that we are now citizens of. So I want to talk about um, how do we operate differently? And it requires you know the tra transformation and a, and a willing participation in the transformation of the Holy Spirit that is ours in Jesus. Um, the scripture says in Ephesians 4, 26, In your anger do not sin, and do not let the sun go down while you're angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. There is an enemy. Um, there is, you know, this, this force, this person, this old man nature. It's all part of the same thing that is looking for a foothold, looking for a beachhead um, in your spirit to get you to operate under the jurisdiction of, of the enemy and to get you to operate un, under the same jurisdiction, the same set of rules, guidelines, and laws that governed you and governed your spirit before you were made alive in Jesus. We are new creations, and we have to understand that. Being a new creation requires that we come into agreement with that new creation, which means when the opportunity arises to operate out of the old man and to operate out of that spirit of offense, um, we come in an opposite spirit. So look at the scripture. It says, In your anger don't sin, and don't let the sun go down while you're angry. Don't give the devil a foothold. Now, I don't know any of you guys... Um, you, you maybe you know a super holy person that I don't know that never gets angry. God bless him. That's not me. My anger is not necessarily in itself sinful. However, it can lead very easily to sinful behavior. When I take that anger and I begin to... It, the, the reality is when we get angry at something like... look t Take the, the current political situation. Whether you're a Trump supporter or whether you're not a Trump supporter. Whether you're a Kavanaugh supporter you're not a Kavanaugh supporter. The entire system right now is designed to separate you and get you mad at other people. Now, when we get angry as believers, a lot of times that anger might be coming from a pure place. But then we do... What the old man used to do with the anger is we take it, we focus it on a person, we focus it on a group, we focus it on something that Jesus loves, and we begin to get bitter at it and offended at it, and that's where the corruption comes. When in reality, God is saying, take that anger, I know what you're feeling, I am empathetic towards what you're feeling, now direct it back at me in a spirit of intercession and prayer, cry out to me for justice. That's what we're supposed to do with our anger. When we're mad at our spouse, and I think I can't possibly be the only one that gets mad at their spouse, and I can't possibly be the only one that has their spouse get mad at them. But where I fail oftentimes is I don't take those feelings of frustration, anger, and offense and turn it to Jesus and say, God, this is what I'm feeling. How do I bless my wife in this in this moment. I don't do that. Therefore, my anger becomes the anger that leads to sin. And that sin is, it's like anger is the infancy. Offense is the adolescence. And then bitterness is full grown, leading to death. And it corrupts many. So, I want to encourage us as believers that when we we have to approach this new creation thing every day because every day the old man is trying to take his position back. He's trying to get beha back behind the wheel and take control again and operate out of the rules and systems that we used to be governed by before we found Jesus. We can't let that happen. The Holy Spirit's actually delivered us. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. So my anger doesn't need to lead to sin. 
I don't need to be perpetually offended, especially, you, you know, a lot of times our offense comes from a place where we think our rights are being violated, and sometimes they are. Guess what? You still don't have to be offended. You still don't have to give in to anger and rage. You still don't have to direct those barrels at human beings and start allowing offense and bitterness to drive your emotions, to drive your heart, and ultimately drive your actions. There is no way to be a transformative church that loves the way Jesus did, which means loves the, love that grows where it ought not to. There's no way to do that if we choose to operate out of offense and bitterness. And I don't care how justified the source of that offense is because Jesus' blood is bigger. We have to believe Jesus' blood is bigger. We believe that it's big enough to get us to heaven. We believe that it's, it's big enough to deliver us from from our porn addiction or our alcohol addiction. We believe that it's, it's big enough to raise the dead and get people out of a wheelchair. But sometimes we don't believe that the blood of Jesus is big enough to recontextualize our offense and our anger and direct it into a venue by the power of the Holy Spirit that drives us to love well. That sometimes I think is one of the biggest miracles of the cross. And it's one of the biggest challenges. Anger, rage, offense, bitterness, they are comfortable places for us. We all know we've been in those groups where we're sitting in five or six people and we're gossiping back and forth because we're all offended at the same thing. It's like scratching an itch. Gosh, it feels great. But that bitterness is going down deeper. That root is going down deeper and it's making it that much harder for you to respond in the gospel way towards that person or towards that group. So I want to encourage you. This is a subject for prayer. This is a subject to take to Jesus in your quiet time and say, God, I believe you can raise the dead. And somehow I'm not even, I don't even think that takes nearly as much faith as it does right now for you to take this heart that's turning to stone towards this people or this group and turn it to a heart of flesh and make me more like your son. So let that be a subject of your prayer time. I love you guys. God bless. And feel free to like and share, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.